Hello fellow sim racers and welcome to part 3 of this sim racing setup guide in which we discuss tow, camber and caster settings. If you've not seen the first two parts then a link to a playlist containing all of my setup videos should be in the top right hand corner of your screen. The suspension in road cars is tuned to provide a combination of handling, comfort and safety. However, in a race car, the suspension has one overriding goal, to maximize the surface area of the tire in contact with the track at all times. In this video, we're gonna take a look at three settings that determine how the tire interfaces with the road surface, toe, camber, and caster. Toe is the name given to the angle of the tires in relation to the center line of the car when viewed from above. This is referred to as either toe in, when the front of the tires point towards the center line of the car, or tow out when they point outwards. The tow settings for your car have an impact on straight line stability, responsiveness on turning, and perhaps unsurprisingly, tire temperature and wear. Starting with handling, introducing tow out to the front tires will generally make the car more responsive on turning. But if too much is added, this can introduce oversteer. Conversely, adding tow in will make the car slightly less responsive and be more prone to understeer. That being said, Road racing cars are almost always set up with a small amount of toe out on the front to help get the nose of the car turned into corners. And as for the rear tires, keep these pointed inwards. Avoid toe out like the plague unless you enjoy spinning out every time you go near the throttle on corner exit. There's no correct setting for your toe angles, but as a rule, you want to keep them as close to zero degrees as possible to reduce tire drag, which impacts straight line speed. But small changes in toe can make a significant difference in handling. I mentioned earlier that the toe settings you employ also impact tyre temperature and wear. This is simply because a tyre that's not running perpendicular to the direction of travel will scrub slightly. This can be both problematic and extremely helpful, depending on the circumstances. On a cold track, increasing the toe angle slightly can make all the difference when you try to get your tyres up to temperature. Conversely, on a very hot track, the desired level of toe may cause overheating. As with pretty much everything in life, the key is to find the right balance. Camber is the name given to the angle of the tyres in relation to the centre line of the car when viewed from the front. This is referred to as neutral, negative or positive camber, and is measured in degrees. When you take a corner, your car wants to lean towards the outer edge, and so do the tyres. And if the tyres are leaning, then that's going to reduce the amount of surface area that's in contact with the track, and therefore the available grip when cornering. To counteract this, road circuit cars almost always have some degree of negative camber applied, usually between 0 and 3 degrees. This means that when the outer wheels are loaded up during cornering, they're as close to upright as possible. Now, the compromise here is that the inner wheels will be leaning over even more, but the inside tyres don't work nearly as hard as the outer tyres do during cornering. Camber is relatively easy to adjust based on the data you collect while driving, specifically tyre temperatures. Pretty much all racing sims allow you to see the inside, middle and outside temperatures of your tyre, and from this data you can see which part of the tyre is doing the most work. If the inside edge is significantly hotter than the outside, then you've got too much negative camber. If the outside's hotter, dial in a bit more negative camber. If the middle's hotter, drop your tyre pressures a little and start again. Ideally, you want the tyre temperatures to be fairly even across the tyre, but remember that the inside edge of your tyre works harder than the outside, so it's perfectly normal to have a disparity of a few degrees across the tyre surface. Caster is the name given to the angle of the suspension upright with reference to vertical when viewed from the side of the car. This is referred to as either neutral, positive or negative caster, though negative caster is very rarely used. Caster angle impacts the stability of the car and how heavy the steering feels. It's also what causes the car's steering to self-centre. In the real world, caster angle has a big impact on the feeling that a driver experiences through the steering wheel. But for that reason, caster angle is probably less important to sim racers, as we can adjust our force feedback to allow for the weight and feel of steering we desire, without enduring any of the negative aspects that creep in when adjusting the caster angle. In fact, Kunos didn't even bother to make caster angle adjustable in a set of Corsa for this reason. However, caster is a useful adjustment for oval racers and in particularly for drifters, who I'm told like a lot of self-centering force in their steering wheels. To cut a long story short, my approach with caster is to stick with the stock settings as it's almost always fine. And if you want to change the feel of the steering, tweak the force feedback. So to sum things up, 
toe, camber and caster can be adjusted to ensure that the largest possible cross section of the tyre is in contact with the road at any given time. Toe angle can be altered to change the way the car behaves, particularly during direction changes, but comes at a cost of increased tyre drag, which can impact speed and tyre temperatures. Camber is used to ensure that the loaded tyres are at the optimum angle during cornering, but too much or too little can cause uneven tyre heating. And finally, caster helps the steering self align, which is good for straight line stability, but conversely isn't really a setting that most sim racers are going to be too fussed about tweaking. In the next video, we're going to be talking about anti-roll bars and why they're one of the most useful items you can adjust on a simulated race car. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then it'd be great if you could hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And if you think the video will be helpful for others, then please consider sharing it. As always, thank you for donating your precious free time by watching. It is very much appreciated. So all that's left to say is goodbye, thank you for watching, and enjoy the rest of your day.